Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's very, it's very, I'm very pleased to be here. And I think we could do a lot worse than choosing six senators from Western Australia from tonight's panel. Wouldn't that be a, a healthy breath of fresh air in the Senate? Look, we're living in a situation where you'd be hard pressed to find anybody that doesn't have some problem or another with our contemporary capitalist society. You'd be very hard pressed to find someone that doesn't have a problem. It could be some of the contemporary issues like um, you know, the, the recent Labor government cut $2.3 billion from higher education, or the same Labor government um, uh, you know, instituted the plan to push single parents off the, off the single parent pension onto the, onto the unemployment benefit at a much lower rate. Uh, and of course, both those policies have been continued by the Abbott government, and the Abbott government is planning a lot more, big, a much bigger agenda of cuts. So, so there, there could be problems like that. It could be problems like the fact you can't go, uh, you can't go to the shop and be certain that you're not buying genetically engineered uh, food. You can't, um, you know, we've got our government behind our backs, in our name, but behind our backs and in total secret, is negotiating a Trans-Pacific Partnership right now that is going to have, in a lot of ways, have a negative impact on our lives if it is passed, assuming the, uh, based on what we know from the, from the, leaked, um, the leaked chapters that have, been, that have already been released. Now, the reason why the social science is running is because we believe these problems are not accidental. They didn't accidentally happen. Our society is set and structured to create these problems over and over again. And it's not just a matter of, oh, bummer, we elected the wrong people last time. If only we just, you know, can elect better people next time, it might be okay. We believe it's, it's, not, it's, it's, not, it's not that simple. We believe the problem that we have got, the reason why Labor and Liberal governments are failing us over and over again, is because of a corporate power structure which permeates this society and our whole electoral process is corrupted by money. It's corrupted by corporate money at every level, which makes it very hard for ordinary people to get a sense. I, I, I don't think it is true to say that ordinary people in this country have a meaningful say in, what, in the major direction that affects our lives. So there is a solution to that problem. The solution is to break the power of the corporations that are, have got their, their tentacles over every aspect of our government and by extension, uh, every aspect of our lives. Now that's a big ask, but it does have to be confronted directly. And I, I, and I forgot to mention at the beginning when I was talking about the problems, I mean, to me, I think the biggest problem that we face is, is the question of you know, global warming and potential runaway uh, climate change. And this is the classic example of a major issue that, that, that is already affecting people today and will affect all of us in our lifetimes. And it's not, I, I don't, it's not, not an exaggeration to say that this threatens our civilization, if not even the continuation of our species. It's a big issue. We've known about it for decades. I, I first became an activist a couple of years before the 1992 Earth Summit, when at that time it was the largest ever heads of, heads of, gathering of heads of state in the world. And the, the conclusion of that 1992 Earth Summit is global warming is real. It's a real problem. We need to start reducing emissions. 1990 was set as the baseline. We're going to reduce emissions from 1990 levels. Every country in the world, every country that's dominated by this sort of pro-corporate capitalist model went away and ignored the decisions of that summit. And in passing, I mentioned the one country in the world that didn't is Cuba. And I think there is a reason for that. It's because corporations don't rule in Cuba. But I'm going to leave that aside for now. Our plan, our plan, how do we actually go about this process of breaking the power of the, of, of the corporations that are controlling our lives? Step one, we say in social science, is to bring the mines and banks, these monopolised sectors of the economy, out of private hands and into public ownership democratic public ownership. And there are three main reasons why we need to do this. Number one, these, these industries are creating a phenomenal amount of wealth. And we need that wealth. We need that wealth to fund hospitals. We need that wealth to fund schools. We need that wealth to fund renewable energy. We need that wealth to fund the things that we need in our society. Number two, the second reason why we need to do this is so that we can, as fast as possible, solve the environmental problems that are being caused by particularly the mining industry. And in particular, well, tomorrow, close down uranium mining, immediately phase out fracking, and, and as urgently as possible, phase out all fossil fuels. And, and the third reason why we need to take this plan is for basic democracy, so that citizens have actually got control of our society. The four, the four big banks, which, by the way, 
the four big banks are all owned by the same four companies. Um, control the investment decisions, we need to break that vote socialist alliance. Thanks very much, Alex.